I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Welcome back, everybody, to the Bar Talk segment, where we discuss some of the NHL topics, and we're gauging it by your choice of drink. You're either going to take a shot, you're going to buy a beer, or you're going to buy everybody around on this. Wow, this is a good one right here. We've been talking about this. Seattle should take Carey Price, even after signing Chris Drager. Phil, I want to start with you on this, um, because is it wise to put 14 50, almost fifteen million dollars in no fourteen million dollars in salary cap in your goaltenders. Go. Beer. Because of the fact that the cap hit is just very, very astronomically high for two goaltenders. But you're getting a top notch goaltender that can help you win games and be competitive. Caveat, that contract is bad. Contract is bad. It's just you ten point five million for the next five years for a thirty three, soon to be thirty four year old next month goaltender is just not a good deal in years four and five. That's going to be a bad deal. We all saw how Henrik Lundqvist dropped off, and yes, you could point to his defense and say that the defense in front of him in twenty nineteen and twenty nineteen was just absolutely horrendous, which it was. I totally agree with that. But you saw a guy that was running on fumes in 2019, 2020. And you know what? I don't know if I, I do that if I'm if I'm Seattle, but those first three years could absolutely be worth it. So I'm gonna say beer here. Steve. Um I shot. I, look as as much as I like the the, the scenario of Seattle pick and carry prize and and messing up the Canadians' plans. It's a $10 million contract. Uh, he's injured to start the season. They already signed Rieger. Uh, they're probably going to go with Kakunan of the Minnesota Wild as their as their second goalie. Are you guys, and, and who else? You're not going to get Carey Price at $10 million, as, as entertaining as it would be. And what what Phil said, it's, it's comparable to Neil Slunquist in 2017. And yes, that defense wasn't stellar, but let's not pretend the defense was stellar the 10 years leading up to that. The difference between the Rangers from 20, 2005 to 2015 and 2015 till 2020 wasn't Lundqvist. Oh, or sorry, it wasn't a defense. It was just Lundqvist. Lundqvist was bailing out that defense for over a decade. And at some point, the goalie cannot do that anymore. You need to be elite to make something happen with a defense that has Nick Holden, Brady Shea, uh, and, and Dan Boyle. And, and and Ryan McDonough, who could barely walk, and Mark Stahl and Dan Girardi, it, it, on, at some point, a goalie is going is gonna, to is gonna drop off. And Carey Price, if he didn't have this stellar postseason, we wouldn't have this conversation. Anthony. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go beer. Um, I mean, you get it from the perspective of like marketing to have Carey Price be like the big name to start your franchise with, similar what Vegas did with Flurry. Um, is good. And it's tempting. It would stabilize them in goal, you know, for their first couple of years. Um, but that that contract um, is just too much for me. Thirty three years old, uh, five years left, um, ten point five million. That's it's just it's just too much. Um, and plus, I think uh, Dreiger could be pretty good for him if you combine him with another, you know, capable goalie. Do a one A one B. I think they'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I just. I could see why it's tempting for Ron Francis, but ultimately, um, uh, yeah, I, I think they should stay away. But I, I'm saying beer because I do see the plus sides to it. Uh, and I'm going to go with beer, too, only because, yeah, I see the plus sides to it as well. Uh, but, man, $5 million. Uh, first off, any any Henrik Lundqvist has taught us don't pay a goalie over $8 million. Um, as great as he was. And Montreal went to 10 and a half. No, um, you're going to destroy your cap if you do that. Um, hopefully we still get our Seattle segment in. And, uh, because I don't, I don't, I didn't take Carey Price. So, uh, the only other upside to go with Carey Price is that he played his junior hockey in the WHL for the, uh, Tri City Americans. And his wife is from there. Mm -hmm. So you would cater to the fan base by, 
getting a guy who played his junior hockey in the state of Washington. Yeah. If, yeah. if he if his cap hit was five million, they'd do it. But we're talking about we're talking about an eight figure uh, cap hit. It's no. And also, just to, just to throw this one out there too. Um, when Mark Andre Fleury went to Vegas, he already won a Stanley Cup. He just was basically won another two Stanley Cups by watching uh, Matt Murray. Um, and then uh, then he goes out there. It's a new challenge. Explodes, does great, and brings him back to the Stanley Cup Finals. It's not the same situation. Carey Price's business is not done in Montreal, so I wouldn't imagine. And yeah, I just the, don't see that. The one, the one thing I'll say about Seattle is that at least on paper, they'll have a better team than Vegas the day after the expansion draft. Um, yeah. and nobody expected Vegas to even make the playoffs in 2017 when the expansion draft was done. Anyone who says so is lying, and nobody expected them to make the playoffs. Yeah. But looking at the players that are available, James Van Riemsdyk, uh, Jake Voracek just, just in, in, in Philadelphia, Mark Giordano in Calgary, there's Yanni Gord in Tampa. There's so many good players available. If Seattle plays their, plays it right, they can be a playoff team year one. Oh, it's funny that we're talking about Vegas anyway because we're going back there. Uh, Vegas should not be exempt from this expansion draft. And um, Anthony, start it up. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go around here. I mean, I, I know why the the reason for it is they're not because they're not getting, um, they're not getting any money from the from the expansion fee like every other team is. They're not getting, they're not seeing any of that money. So I, that, I, that's the real reason why. However, with that said, they've been in the league since 2017. They've had a very successful team. Um, like they've been in the league long enough now where they can afford to lose a player like everybody else. Um, I really think they should have had to given up a player. Um, you know, aside from the financials of it, I, I still I still think that was the wrong decision. I think they should have had to lose a player, just like everybody else. They're part of the league. It's only fair. Like I said, it's not like they're a, a basement-dwelling team. Um, they could have afforded it. So for me, this is easy. This is a round. They should have been losing a player. And if they were, you got to assume the, the Kraken would have picked Leonard or Flurry. That would have been a that would have been a simple choice for them. We're getting our goalie from Vegas, but... Instead, that's not the case, but round here. Phil. Yeah, I'm, I'm buying everybody around on this, too. And it, not even just to Anthony's point, but, you know, for, for any other future NHL teams, you could have set a precedent here. And the precedent being that, you know, if you're in this league long enough, no matter what the result is, you're, you're going to expose a player. So, I mean, 18, 19, 20, and 21, so four years could have been pressing. You know, if you're in the league for four years, then you know what? You're exposing a player. It doesn't matter how good or bad your team is. I, I think the NHL dropped the ball on that. They should have had to expose a player for, uh, from Vegas. So, fine around. Steve? Um, yeah, shot because, um, you know, the Seattle expansion draft was actually supposed to be a year ago, which makes it three years. And I think the... the um, the negotiations had already started for Seattle when Vegas was entering the league. And if you compare them to other expansion draft teams, and I actually I looked this up, of course, um, the entrance fee that the Vegas Golden Knights paid four years ago was $500 million. Uh, 30 years ago, when the Sharks entered the league, it was $45 million. So it's a completely different scenario, completely different situation. It's also the reason why the expansion draft rules are slightly different. But... The San Jose Sharks were exempt from an expansion draft. The Nashville Predators were exempt from two expansion drafts, 1999 and 2000. Uh, Atlanta Thrashers, of course, were exempt in the 2000 expansion draft. Uh, so it's not the first time that a team is exempt. Uh, they just gave Vegas the option. They didn't tell them you don't have to lose a player. They gave them the option. And as a, and this is what one of the other guys mentioned, by not uh, participating in the expansion draft, they don't get a cut of the pie, so to speak. Seattle paying $650 million to enter the league. It's ridiculous. Um, look, I'm, I'm perfectly, perfectly fine with Vegas being exempt. Uh, the only reason people are upset about it is because they made the Stanley Cup final in their first year with a roster that if, if uh, Doctor Strange has 14 million timelines to go through, He's only going to find one where the Vegas Golden Knights make the Stanley Cup final in year one. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's be serious. You know, they're, they're a good team, but the Vegas Golden Knights put together a good team and a good future 
not because of the expansion draft rules, but because general managers are fucking idiots. Yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, and I'm just yeah. gonna go. I'm gonna go to this comment from Chris where he's saying Seattle's gonna have a weaker top line because, but their depth could be fantastic. Their top mm-hmm. line in Vegas was only, uh, I believe that was Riley Smith, Jonathan Marshall, so and William, uh, William Peters, uh, William, uh, William Carlson. Carlson. I mean, yeah. that's not a great top line to start. Yeah. And and my answer on that, I'm, I'm going with you. It's uh, it's it's beer. Uh, only because, again, uh, Nashville was exempt from two expansion drafts. By the way, I looked it up today to make sure that they were exempt in 99. They chose the um, well-known Chris Tamer from the New York Rangers that year. Um, I'm not sure if anybody can even remember what team he played on other than I, the Rangers. I, I remember something that Chris Tamer did, though. Chris Tamer basically ended Mike Richter's career with a slap shot in February of 2002 that hit him basically in the side of the temple. That was it's, yeah. it's, it's, correct. It's funny you mentioned Mike Richter because he was also picked by Nashville in the expansion draft. That's yeah. correct too. Uh, he was picked by Nashville, but he was a free agent, so the Rangers got back. They got him back, and compensation went the other way. Yeah. You know? And and for the same reason, a couple of years later, they traded Richter to the Edmonton Oilers, who then didn't sign Richter. He stayed with the Rangers, and then they got a compensatory pick. That whole compensatory pick system was a sham. Yeah. I, yeah. It, the only the only thing is is that those teams being exempt, they were only in the league for like a year at the time of each of these expansion drafts. Vegas has been in the league for four years. They've had more than enough time to get on their feet. Uh, yeah, they, they they also paid twelve times more than the Sharks to enter the league. I, I get that. I, I get that. I just it, they shouldn't have had to. But I mean, again, that's inflation. That's economics. That's no, not- no. But it's also, it's also part of the negotiation. The Seattle expansion or. Then Seattle wasn't confirmed, but there was confirmation that there would be a 32nd team in the in the next few years. And part of the negotiation with Vegas was that they were given the option. And they were given the option, and they, they chose not to participate. Um, look, I don't hate it. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's funny that people think the Vegas Golden Knights were given a Stanley Cup final team by Gary Bettman. When in fact it was general managers falling over themselves to give them picks and prospects to uh, to protect players that four years later are garbage. And they might have you learned know? their lesson this time around. That's, yeah, that's yeah awesome. exactly. And you don't see the kind of trades with Seattle this year. Four years ago, the Anaheim Ducks gave them Shea Theodore so they could keep Josh Manson. The Florida Panthers gave up Riley Smith and Jonathan Marshall so they Alex could keep Petrovic. Petrovic. Alex um, Petrovic, who is not protected for this draft. I exactly. Know. Exactly. The last time I saw Alex Petrovic, he was on a milk carton. <laughs> Look, and, and, and the worst team in the league when it comes to expansion drafts is the Minnesota Wild. They give up Alex Tuck and Eric Haula to keep Matt, Matt Dumba, and four years later, they buy out Ryan Suter to keep him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, 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 you can't make to keep Matt Dumba. It's, it's, look, not, not that Matt Dumba is a bad player. He should have stuck to number 55, by the way. That was the best number for a guy named Dumba. Um, so, by the way, we talked about this earlier, Stephen. But, so, you're going to start this up for us. Um, yeah. The Ryan Ellis deal is the biggest trade so far. Oh, no, 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 no. The Brad Howden trade is the biggest one so far. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting a fourth now. No, but seriously, Ryan Ellis to the Flyers for uh, Philippe Myers and Nolan Patrick. Uh, and then they flipped Nolan Patrick for Cody Glass with Vegas. Um, Nashville was going to make a trade, and in the last couple of weeks, I have opt- I have suggested a trade for Matthias Ekholm because I knew Nashville was going to was going to go with with one of those players to get traded. They wanted to protect. They cannot protect all of them. They didn't want to lose Dante Fabro. Uh, I think they protected Carrier a uh, Carrier with Ekholm, yep. Yoshi. Uh, and Fabro, and then a fifth one, because they went with five defensemen. After trading away Ryan Ellis, uh, yeah, absolutely wild that they traded Ryan Ellis, but, you know, in the long run, I think it's going to benefit Nashville. Because Philip Myers is a really good defenseman. Uh, Myers' situation is weird. He was undrafted, and then a week after the draft or something, he was signed by the Flyers. It's Oh, so was that a beer or a shot? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, around. Big, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Biggest oh, deal so far. Oh, so it's the biggest deal so far. Phil. Yeah. Round. I mean, there, there's no other trade that even. Uh, uh, you know what? 
I don't want to say it came out of nowhere because, like Anthony said, that, that there is sort of a kind of a sense, and even Steven said it, that Nashville was going to deal, you know, someone or something away. But I, I did not expect Ryan Ellis. I, if you would have told me Matias at home, I, I would have said, hey, I could totally see that coming. But Ryan Ellis, really? The younger, arguably better defender at this point? Signed long term still, too? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know. I that To me, this is, I'm buying around until another trade. Probably It's, it's probably going to be the biggest trade until the I goal and Seth Jones trades happen. So, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to steal Anthony's answer real quick. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which, uh, you know, yes. Again, we were talking yes. about this just before you got on the air with us. I'm just going to go back to this for a second. There's yes. nothing in the return section. <laughs> Not even no. receipt. It's, sort of like, it, it's sort of like we could give you back. We could, uh, you want something from us? No, we don't. Just take them. <laughs> uh, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, honestly, we'll like, like the, I said, we'll I. Take the answer, yeah. Like I said, I, I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't think that was even allowed. I, I think when you make a trade, it has to be something going back to you know the other team. That, that was really funny. Um, no, the consideration they're not considering. That that was that. I mean, that was a big trade for the Islanders, but um, the biggest trade overall. Um, yeah, definitely the Ryan Ells deal will go around here. Like I said, I like Phil said. I thought it was going to be at home. Um, I mentioned that too earlier. Um, I guess Philly values the, the the bigger defenseman, if you will. Um, but yeah, a good move for Philly. I think he he really helps their D. I mean, when Niskanen kind of retired on them, I think that left them with a hole that they never really replaced. Um, so Philip Myers, he's a decent defenseman, but Ryan Ellis is is really good. So um, Philly's got to reap the benefits here for sure. Um, and until like Phil said, the Eichel trade happens or the Seth Jones trade or. Um, another trade we don't see coming that could potentially be larger. This is this is the largest one, so I'm going around. This trade season is going to be off the hook, um, to to borrow a, a, a line from the '90s. But uh, did, anyone, did anyone see uh, Scott, what John Scott said? No, what John Scott came out and said this is, nothing has happened yet, but this is already the craziest off season ever, and is probably going to be. So I, I'm I'm kind of with John Scott on this one. And by the way, Ziga, they didn't even take the pucks. That's that's what the thing is. They're like, no, that's we're the gonna want the puck. Um, that's the best. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna say beer. I'm still gonna say the Andrew Ladd trade is huge. I know you didn't get anything back, but they got back. They got back cap space, and then tack on the Nick Letty trade on top of that. I mean, how how did he even pull this off? Yes, you, you, by the way, and um, and also, if you watched Rangers review on Warty NHL yesterday, Stephen was talking about how. Uh, Nolan Patrick could recover from this and be a better player again? Yeah, look, the Cody Glass Nolan Patrick trade is is one that could go either way. Cody Glass, I think, had a concussion. Nolan Patrick's injuries were migraine related. Um, I think Cody Glass has a, has a better chance to make a full recovery. But if Nolan Patrick makes a full recovery, he has the higher ceiling. So it's it's. It's a risky trade for both teams, but I understand from both perspectives why they make the trade. Well, um, before we get out, uh, we got to do the Oilers got an oil thing. What do you think about the Duncan Keith trade? Uh, I heard that Duncan Keith wanted to go to Edmonton to be closer to his family because this past season he didn't see his family at all because to, because of the closed borders. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm surprised at what they gave up for him. Exactly. Caleb Jones, I think. Um, you know, yeah. You know who has the higher, you know, who has the higher ceiling out of out of all of them, Patrick and Cody Glass, Andrew Ladd. You know why? Because in an unprecedented procedure, they're gonna knock Connor Bedard unconscious, and they're gonna replace his knees and give him to Ladd, and Ladd's gonna skate for the Coyotes, and he's gonna win the Rocket Richard. You heard, you heard it here first. No, 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 no. The only way Andrew Ladd has a higher ceiling is if he lives in a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he did earn $987,000 per goal he scored with the New York Islanders. So, all right. Well, again, we're delighted to have Stat Boy Steven with us today from Rangers, the co-host of Rangers Review on Warty NHL. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. 
And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.